Okay. Welcome to another episode of Behind the Muscle with me, the Gorilla Chemist, Chief Science Officer here at Blackstone Labs. And today we are going to be talking about the science behind our latest product, Trojan Horse, which is a non-stimulant fat burner, which is pretty unique. Uh, there's not many products like it on the market. This video will be slightly science heavy, so please bear with me, but I promise you, once you understand how this product works, you'll understand why it's so effective. So let's get started. This is the electron transport chain. This is how our body makes ATP, which is our energy source, right? This only works because of this positive and negative charge on the sides of the membrane. So on the inner membrane space, we have a positive charge. And then in the mitochondrial matrix, we have a negative charge. Now this electrochemical gradient is the force that drives ATP synthase to turn ADP into ATP, okay? Now we are gonna trick the body in this aspect. Um, there are two key molecules that I need you to focus on. One is NADH and the other is FADH2. These are electron carrier molecules and they are responsible for making this gradient. If you look at the reaction here, NADH gets oxidized to NAD plus and it gives off an electron and a proton. Uh, the same thing happens here with FADH2, only it happens twice. So there's two electrons given off and two protons. Now, if you look, the protons are then driven up through the membrane space and that's what creates this positive charge here and the negative charge here. So the electrons made from this reaction stay here on the bottom in the mitochondrial matrix while the protons get pushed up here in the inner membrane space to create the positive charge, okay? What we're gonna do is we're gonna manipulate this and make our body think that we're not doing this correctly. So here we go. HCA is hydroxy citric acid. Now this ingredient does a couple of things. One, it blocks the conversion of acetyl-CoA into malonyl-CoA, right? Malonyl-CoA is the precursor to all fatty acids in the body. So once we have a large amount of malonyl-CoA, that will lead to high levels of fatty acid synthesis. So the first thing it does is it blocks that pathway. It, um, malonyl-CoA also blocks this enzyme, which is carnitine palmitoyl transferase 1, or CPT1. This is the enzyme responsible for beta oxidation of fatty acids. So if we had high levels of malonyl-CoA, we would have low levels of fat burning, basically, and high levels of fat storage. So the first thing we're doing is blocking the production of malonyl-CoA. But the cool thing that it does is HCA also pushes the reaction of pyruvate to go to oxyl acetate. And I'll get to that in a second, because that's what we want. Um, the other, one of the other ingredients in here is L-carnitine L-tartrate. Now what L-carnitine does is that it is a cofactor for this enzyme, CPT1. And carnitine actually carries fatty acids across the membrane into the mitochondria where they can be burned. Fatty acids, because of their polarity, cannot cr readily cross the membrane. So L-carnitine acts as a carrier. And so it is absolutely necessary for beta oxidation that carnitine is, uh, carries over the fatty acids into the membrane. So we have HCA inhibiting fatty acid synthesis. We have carnitine upregulating um, CPT1. So we have fatty acids being oxidized. Now, the, when I mentioned this part, uh, pyruvate, which is our Trojan horse, um, by HCA blocking this pathway, which pyruvate normally gets converted into acetyl-CoA by the enzyme pyruvate dehydrogenase. And by doing so, it makes a molecule of NADH. Now you'll notice there's an electron here. This electron comes from this enzyme to make NADH. And then these molecules, uh, acetyl-CoA then goes into the Krebs cycle. And the Krebs cycle is coupled with the electron transport chain. So that way the reactions all flow together. So normally you have glycolysis, which the end product is pyruvate, and then pyruvate 
gets converted to oxy, um, I'm sorry, acetyl acetate, and it goes into the Krebs cycle. And then the Krebs cycle goes into electron transport, and that's how your body makes energy. So what, basically what we're doing is we are down-regulating the process of pyruvate going to acetyl-CoA. We are up-regulating the process of pyruvate going to oxyl acetate. Now here's where the Trojan horse part comes in. Oxyl acetate um, is not bioavailable enough to be taken orally. So we had to think of a way to increase our levels of oxyl acetate with something that you can take as a powder or a pill. Um, pyruvate is that Trojan horse that we can kind of slip in and by the right mixture of chemicals, by like I said, upregulating this enzyme, we're now increasing our levels of oxyl acetate. Now, this is where the product gets really cool. So remember I talked about this electron here that's responsible for the reduction of NAD plus to NADH. Well, since we're now converting pyruvate mostly to oxyl acetate, oxyl acetate has a very high redox potential, meaning that the energy for it to get reduced into malate is favorable. So this reaction will go forward. So we are stealing the electrons from making NADH to NADH and we're now making more malate. Now this is a favorable reaction given that everything here um, is pushed forward via the HCA. So once the electrons here go to malate, malate goes back into this uh, Krebs cycle and these electrons now instead of going here where we need them, they re-enter the electron transport chain here. So they are completely bypassing this step. So these two molecules, which are made inside the Krebs cycle, the electrons necessary for these molecules to be made are being stolen by oxyl acetate. And that's kind of the idea of the uncoupling. Now, normally when you have, you'll have high levels of oxyl acetate, that will lead to low levels of NADH and FADH2, and that is what we want to happen. So instead of um, the, like I said, instead of these electrons going through the Krebs cycle, we are, we're splitting or uncoupling the process of making energy, which is really cool. So the main, so where does your body get the electrons then to make these molecules since we, since these molecules are absolutely necessary to make ATP? Well, the cool thing is your body actually will now break down fat completely into CO2 and NADH and FADH2. So your body is getting the electrons necessary for these two molecules by completely breaking down fat. So that's how you're, that's kind of how Trojan horse is working first. We're kind of stealing electrons that are necessary for this process to happen and we're making up for it by causing your body to increase its energy production by breaking down fat. Um, one other cool thing that this product does is that pyruvate, once we have it formed in oxyl acetate, kind of goes into this feudal cycle here of pyruvate, oxyl acetate, and phenyl pyruvate, oh, I'm sorry, phosphophenylpyruvate. Now, some of this oxyl acetate, like I said, does go to malate. The rest that doesn't goes here to phosphoenolpyruvate. And this just goes back and forth because we don't really need this molecule for the purposes of what I'm speaking of. So by this going back and forth between these three molecules, your body is essentially burning energy and throwing it off as heat. So this is where the thermogenic part of the process comes into play. Like when, when you take Trojan horse, you'll feel a slight increase in your body temperature. And that's from this process right here. So not only are we burning fat from stored fat to make up for the, uh, the, the production of these two molecules here, we're also causing your body to go into this feudal cycle that gives off heat for energy. That way, not only are you burning fat, but you're also, you feel it inside that more calories are being expended as heat versus energy. So we're kind of tricking your body into working much harder to make ATP than it normally has to. So, I thought this whole thing was, was uh, really cool. Now there have been other uncouplers in the past like dinitrophenol and eusinic acid, but those were very toxic to the body. They created a lot of free radicals and DMP can actually heat up your body temperature several degrees. 
so you, 101, 102 degrees, you can literally cook your organs. This product, however, has a very clean safety panel and none of these ingredients that we have in here can do any of those things. We don't generate a lot of free radicals from this uncoupling. Uh, none of these are liver toxic. None of these heat up your organs enough to the point where it's detrimental. So this is the chemistry behind Trojan Horse. To recap, we are making your body work harder to form ATP by eliminating the process of making these molecules which normally come from the Krebs cycle. So instead of pyruvate going to acetyl-CoA and into the Krebs cycle, we are now pushing this reaction to oxyelastate. Oxyelastate steals the electrons that are normally being made for here and pushes them to re-enter at this stage, which foregoes the production of these. Your body will then break down or oxidize fatty acid in order to get the electrons and energy necessary to produce these two molecules which carry electrons through and make this gradient that we talked about that is so important uh, to turn ATP synthase to make AD ATP from ADP. So hopefully you guys enjoy the product. The data on this is actually really good. They did a pilot study uh, using obese people and overweight people and without a change in diet or exercise, people are averaging losing 2.3 kilos, which is about five pounds a week. And they did this study for four weeks. So the average weight, sorry, average fat loss was uh, over 20 pounds. So the results of this stuff are very good. The more body fat you have, the more body fat you're going to lose from this product. But this product is completely safe to take. You can take it at night because there's no stimulants right before you go to bed. You can take it at any time. You can stack it with any stimulant fat burner because those work via different mechanisms. So if you really wanted to turn up the heat, you'll take a stimulant product with Trojan Horse. But I specifically made this product because like myself, I don't like the high stimulant feeling. So this is completely stimulant free and it's very, very effective. So for me, Gorilla Chemist, Chief Science Officer here at Blackstone Labs, I'm signing off. I hope you enjoyed this video and tune in next time when we talk about PCT5.